Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and here are 10 of my favorite books of all time. I am super excited for today's video. I get to gush about 10 of my favorite books. Now these are only 10 of my favorite books. I have more favorite books. I have a list of like 22 books that are my favorite, um, but I'm only gonna be talking about 10. So if you wanna know 11 more, 12 more, I can't count. <laughs> Comment down below, let me know. All of these are all time favorites for me. Um, there's maybe only one or two that like outrank the best as my favorite books of all time, you know? Um, but I love all of these books with every fiber of my being. And so I'm gonna gush about these books to you right now. So not all these books are categorized as romance books, but all of them have a romantic element in there, whether it be a solely romance book or there is a couple in the book that I am absolutely obsessed with. And that's probably why I loved the book so much. So we're gonna get the obvious one out of the way and it is Radiance by Grace Draven. This is my favorite romance book of all time. This is a friends to lovers fantasy romance that I love. I love it so much. And this is about Ildiko and Brishan. Ildiko is a gallery woman who is essentially like a human. And Brishan here is a Kai man. He is a spare prince and she is the niece to the gallery um, king. And so they have to be in an arranged marriage to unite their kingdoms or have like peace between their kingdoms. Both of them are from a different race species on in this fantasy land. And so they have to get married to each other and they both think that the other species is absolutely grotesque, ugly, cannot stand to look at them. But this is an arranged marriage between the two of them and it is a friends to lovers. And so they grow as friends and then it develops into love. And it is absolutely beautiful. I love these characters so much. I cannot get enough of this story. I am a sucker for friends to lovers. I love friends to lovers so much. And this is like the epitome of a friends to lovers romance. Like if you are not finding a fan of friends to lovers that's authentic, read this one. This one is the most authentic friends to lovers I have ever read in my entire life. It is beautiful, like beautiful to read about. The second one is good as well. The second one has more, uh, war plot devices in there. Um, this one is very character based. I am a huge character based person. I love character based stories. And so this one blew me away. I love this book so much. If you were to read any book on this list and you love romance, please pick up this book. It is my favorite. Next I have, I think I want to say my favorite, uh, young adult fantasy book, which is Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf. Book two and three are already out and I own them and I just, I haven't gotten to them. And I don't know why, I don't know why my brain's not making me want to read them, but this book I am obsessed with and I've reread it multiple times. It is an all time favorite. So this takes place in a fantasy land and our heroine named Zira is a heartless. So essentially what heartless people are, are humans that were turned into, I don't wanna say zombies, kind of like, I don't know. They were, they're controlled by a witch essentially. So our main character, Zira here, she was in an accident with her parents, I believe when she was 17 or 16, and a witch stumbled across them. And she ended up saving Zira, both Zira's parents died, but she ended up saving Zira by taking out Zira's heart and putting it in a jar and making her become her heartless. So heartless basically are creatures that obey the witch, like they're basically have to follow the witch's every command, like they're controlled by this witch. And so this is two years after she has been turned into a heartless and um, the human kingdom and the witches are at war with each other. And so the witches uh, tell Zira that they can make her back into a human. They can give her her heart back if she pretends to be um, one of the girls sent to court the prince to essentially be a future wife for him. What she is tasked to do is to go pretend and woo him essentially, but she's actually going to be um, trying to turn him into a heartless so that they can control him, the witches can control him, which will then control the king and the witches can win this war between them and the humans. And so it's a story about Zira going to go pretend to be a human girl, try to went over this prince. The element in here that was super interesting is her hunger. So for example, if you watch like the Vampire Diaries, their hunger for blood is like a character in and of itself and it is like dominating them. So Zira can only eat raw flesh. And so if you're, if you're not into that, I don't, I don't know if you wanna read this. <laughs> that hunger for that flesh 
is like its own character it's her evil conscious talking to her and she has to battle every single day not to rip somebody apart and it is crazy <laughs> i actually have a whole entire review for this book i'll link it down below it is one of my only soul book reviews on my channel and i really enjoy that video so this this character was just amazing this has the classic trope of i'm going to go kill you and i fall in love with you and I love that trope and I need to read more of them. Um, but book two and book three are already out. I believe it's a trilogy. So if you want to binge the series, go on ahead. Maybe you can binge it with me because I've only read book one. But this one I believe is, I think this book is just honestly amazing. I find it really unique in certain ways. I overall just love this. Then I have my favorite book from 2020. We have Get Alive Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This book means so much to me. So this is about our main character named Chloe Brown and she has a chronic illness called fibromyalgia. And this book starts out with Chloe almost getting hit by a car, page one basically, and her life is flashing before her eyes and she's thinking about all the things she's never done and hasn't done yet with her life. And so she decides to make a get a life list where she has a list of a bunch of things she wants to do as soon as possible, move out of her parents' house, ride a motorcycle, go out clubbing with friends, those kinds of things. Um, and so she gets into this new apartment and there she meets Redford who is the superintendent and it is an immediate dislike between the two of them. Uh, they both don't like each other, they banter all the time, but Chloe actually designs websites and so she tells Red, who does art, that she will help him build his art website if he will help her complete her get a life list and it is the remnants between the two of them this book just means so much to me because of the chronic illness representation in here i believe that telly hibber also has fibromyalgia or another chronic illness she represents us so well people who have chronic illnesses like it is honestly just amazing i know a lot of people love um, take a hint Danny Brown which is over there um, which is the second book in the series and everyone most people like that one more than this one well this one is my favorite I love Danny and Zaff from take a hint Danny Brown but this one just it means so much to me and like Chloe's story and Chloe's journey and I connected with her so much and I felt her on so many levels and I have experienced similar things to her and it just it honestly broke me when I read this like it broke me this romance in here is honestly bomb fire amazing as well i love this couple so stinking much i can't wait for book three in the series to come out which is about eve but yeah this is definitely a favorite of all time for me i have so many tabs in here i could like sit here all day and gush about this book but we gotta move on <laughs> next i have another romance book which is royally matched by emma chase so a bunch of people probably don't even know what the series is so this is the royally series by emma chase i have the other three here i'll just take them out the other three in this series, which is Really Screwed, you've probably seen this one before. Really Screwed is the first one, and then Really In Doubt is this third one, and then uh, Really Yours is the fourth one slash the kind of like prequel book. I love this series so much. The main reason why I love this book so much is because I am this heroine. Like this heroine is me as a person, and I connect to her so much. This book is like bachelor royal edition you do have to read book one before this one or you won't really understand what's going on um but you can just fly through book one book two is about prince henry to this country this made-up country um but it's real in the book <laughs> um he is the prince and uh he really wants to uh get with the ladies and so um a tv show company a channel on tv like comes up to him and is like uh, we want to do a bachelor but like royal edition with you as the bachelor and you're trying to find your future princess and he's like okay and so a bunch of women eligible young ladies who are of noblish birth go to this showing this filming one of the contestants who comes to be on the show brings her sister sarah along as her companion sarah is not going to be on the show um but she's just there to keep her sister company and so henry meets sarah and it is a romance between Henry and Sarah. This heroine is me. She is me. She is shy and unsure and caring and understanding and a bookworm. And there's this one scene in here where um, she collects these old, withered, very valuable books to her. And Henry just does not understand. And it's like, it's just a book. And she like has to explain to him how much like these objects mean to her beautiful beautiful i i love her so much sarah is me if you ever want to know what i am like as a person like as like my personality me as a person it is sarah in here 
<laughs> I feel like Emma Chase like wrote me as a person in this book. Again, another book that I absolutely adore and it is one of my all-time favorites for sure. A very obvious one that will be one of my favorites for a very long time is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. This is the second book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series if you did not know and I love this book. Um, <laughs> uh, I know a lot of people have issues with Sarah J Maas and everything and think she's overhyped which at this point so many people are talking about her. She was not like, she was not overhyped like this whenever I read it. I read this book when it first came out. I read Akatar for the first time the week it came out and like nobody was talking about it. Nobody knew what it was and so it's kind of very interesting to see how much this series has gained in popularity um, throughout the world, throughout our country, throughout TikTok specifically. If you didn't know about this series, this is a uh, fantasy series. People say it's YA. I call it new adult. It's kind of like the bridge between adult and young adult books. And so Feyre in here is a human and she ends up killing a wolf on fairy lands and fairies and humans don't mix anymore. Um, and then she kills this wolf who may or may not be a fairy. And then she brings that wolf home. And later that day, a beast comes and takes her back to his land in retribution of killing his wolf friend. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. The first book is good. I didn't know how the series was gonna progress and I didn't know what I had to look forward to whenever the first book came out. But this second one, I have read it so many times. I can't even like, I can't even guess what, how many times, like I can't. Mainly because the audiobook is one of the best things ever to listen to. I will listen to it to help me fall asleep. Like it is so soothing and welcoming. Like a warm hug that I can sink into. This book is just so, good. The other books in the series are great and all, but I feel like this one, just like the story that both of our main characters in here have to go through and the characters that we're introduced to in the storyline, it just, I feel like this book is like perfection, like perfection in a series. Um, and I cannot wait for A Court of Silver Flames to come out because it's probably already out at this point <laughs> um, by the time you're watching this. So um, it comes out in four days for me. So I am counting down the days. <laughs> Next, I have two classics in here that just are everything to me. First is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. This book is amazing. This is about four sisters during the Civil War era in America and just their life. And I know that a bunch of people are very bored by this book and don't get this book and just find it very boring. I, I love it. I love it so much. I don't know. This is just my kind of story. I love these sisters so much. We have um, Meg, Amy, Beth, and Joe. Uh, and these just, these sisters like are everything. They're everything. I love them <laughs> so much. And each sister in here, every single girl is different. They're, they're raised the same, they're loved the same, but their personalities, the way that they hold themselves, the way that they, they talk, the way that they care for others is so different. It's, it's honestly just amazing how Lucy May Alcott can like make this group of women, like, Ha be sisters and love each other even though they're all vastly different from one another. It holds such nostalgia for me. Um, I hadn't read the book until last year. I believe was the first time that I read this book. Um, not last year, sorry, 2019. <laughs> but I grew up with the movie. I grew up with Winona Ryder being Joe and just watching that movie over and over and over and over again. And when I finally read this book, it was amazing. It was amazing and the the new movie is amazing as well but i don't feel like anything can beat the one on writer version in my eyes because i grew up with it um but i love both but this book just really like holds a special place in my heart because it's something that i just i love it i love it so much i love these women so much i love these sisters so much i love just watching them grow and develop and fall in love i also am a person again who likes character driven books a bunch of people probably think this is super boring because you're just following four women grow up and nothing really else happens. And so a bunch of people think that's boring and I love it. So that's why I love this. My other classic that I'm going to be talking about is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This was my favorite book for a while. Like I would say Jane Eyre is my favorite. I don't know if I would necess necessarily say that it is my favorite of all time anymore. It is definitely one of my favorites. I don't think I have a favorite of all time book anymore in all honesty. <laughs> um, but this one is definitely my favorite classic. This is obviously a classic book about Jane Eyre who, um, grew up with no family with being abused by the family who did have to take her in and she ends up being sent to this all-girls boarding school where she's again abused by many people finally when she's able to escape that she is old enough to be a governess and so by her leaving this boarding school she becomes a governess for uh the ward to mr rochester and mr rochester is way older than her 
way older than her um, and she has to take care of his ward. It is a story about Jane mostly but I I also am the kind of person who loves the toxicity between <laughs> Mr. Rochester and Jane and their romance. I don't know why I know that their romance is like bizarre and a bunch of people don't like it and I understand that and it's toxic in some ways but like I can't help but love them you know. My handle for my Twitter before I deleted it was literally future Mrs. Rochester. <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> It's for fictional Mr. Rochester here. I love Jane so much. I love seeing her grow into an amazing, beautiful, confident, independent young woman by the end of this. If you're to read any classic, I feel like this one is the best of all time other than Little Women, obviously. I love Charlotte Bronte and the way that she just writes her book. I love all the Bronte sisters, um, but I don't know, Charlotte Bronte, this book is just everything. I connected with Jane like so much in here, her story, what she goes through. It's a lot, but I feel like it's worth it in the end. And I feel like this just a, is a read that I feel like a bunch of people should just pick up and finally read. Then I have The Problem with Forever by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This book I feel like is so underrated, like so underrated. Nobody I know has read this book other than me and I need more people to read it. <laughs> this is a young adult, or I wanna say new adult, maybe. I don't really know. I think it's maybe new adult because there's like kind of some steamy stuff in here and I don't necessarily think that steamy stuff should be in young adult books. This book is about Mallory and Mallory grew up in a foster home and she was abused as a kid. Her foster father yelled at her so much and told her to shut up so much to a point where she stopped speaking because he told her not to speak anymore. Like he just wanted her to stop talking so she ended up becoming mute. One day she has to go to the hospital because of something that happened at this foster home. The doctor there sees her and ends up adopting her. And this is years later after she's been adopted. She's not entirely mute, she's now selectively mute. She's been homeschooled ever since she was adopted. And her senior year, she really wants to go to high school for the first time. And she really wants to challenge herself and go out into the world more. And so uh, she goes to high school and her first day there, she sees Ryder who may or may not be her foster brother from when she was in that abusive foster home. <sighs> this book is so good. I say that about all these books, but this book is honestly like if you have, if you love YA contemporary books or if you like contemporary books in general, I feel like even if you only love adult, I feel like you'd also love this too. It does have some of that typical mean girl high school thing going on. Um, at some points in here, but um, I feel like it's just so worth it with the romance in here and with Mal Mallory's growth as a person. So there is obviously a trigger warning with abuse in here because of what she went through as a kid, but I feel like Jennifer L. Armentrout just writes so beautifully and this book definitely shows it. Then I have The Host by Stephanie Meyer. I know, The Host Before Twilight. Twilight is good enough. I have a whole entire cube here just for Twilight stuff. But this book is way better content wise. I know this. I will always be a Twi Heart. I love Twilight so much. But this book in and of itself is an, a, an amazing book. Again, if you don't like character driven books, you're not gonna like this book. <laughs> um, this book uh, is a post apocalyptic sci fi book, adult sci fi. This book is about our main character named Wanderer, nicknamed Wanda throughout the book. Wanderer is an alien and in this post-apocalyptic earth setting aliens have abducted earth and the human species is essentially almost completely wiped out so these aliens the way that they inhabited earth was they're these little itty bitty beings and they overtake a human body and become their host for the body they the person who used to be in that body does not exist anymore after this person after this alien has been put in their brain but when a wanderer gets put in this girl's body melanie who is the originator of this body this human girl she fights back and she doesn't die she still lives in her brain she's there she's not gone she didn't disappear and so wanderer has to fight with melanie this whole time and eventually start to become friends with melanie and help melanie find her loved ones wanda in here is one of my favorite characters of all time of all i'm literally getting chills right now <laughs> um she is everything she's everything and you just see her grow into this confident independent person find love and acceptance and 
she does this all through kindness all through kindness all through patience and love i love the like kick butt heroines and everything but i more so relate to those who are more i don't want to say passive but more um non-confrontational and more loving and kind much less butt heads person and wanda embodies that you know and her story in here is amazing her love story in here is everything to me um melanie her story in here is amazing as well and her love interest and just the humans and just like all these characters are amazing and great like the movie is great and all if you've watched the movie it's a great movie i think so the book is 1000 million times better and lastly i have salt to the sea by ruta sapetes i actually have two copies with me one of which this one is signed where is it there you go it's signed i really wanted to meet ruta sapetes but I think I had to work the day that she um, came into my uh, little bookshop that was by my house, so I didn't get to meet her, but um, she signed this book for me and I got to pick it up afterward, um, but it would have been amazing to meet her and have her sign my original. I wish, I even, I called the place, the bookstore, and I was like, if I leave my copy with you, can you please have her sign it? And they're like, sorry, we can't do that. We can't be responsible for your book, which I completely understand, so I just bought a new one, but Man, if she were to sign this book for me. This book is one of my most beat up, loved books ever. I've read, I've reread this book so many times. This is a historical fiction novel, if you didn't know. I would categorize it as YA because it's about four teenagers during World War II. I just want to like read the like little blurb on the side because I feel like it sums it up pretty well. Winter 1945 four teenagers, four secrets, each one born of a different homeland, each one hunted and haunted by tragedy, lies, and war, as thousands of desperate refugees flock to the coast in the midst of a Soviet advance, four paths converge, vying for passage aboard the Wilhelm Guslov, a ship that promises safety and freedom, yet not all promises can be kept. Inspired by the single greatest tragedy, in marine time history, Rita Petty lifts the veil on a shocking, little-known casualty of World War II, an illuminating and life-affirming tale of hope and heart. The biggest, like, um, human casualties when it comes to a shipwreck was the Wilhelm Guslov during World War II. Hundreds, if not thousands, I'm pretty sure, died on this ship. Everyone thinks the Titanic as devastating. This. I believe is triple that. And so these four teenagers, by some circumstance, end up all on the ship together and you read the perspective of each teenager in here. My favorite character in here is Amelia. I'm not gonna talk Amelia about Amelia for long because she makes me wanna cry because I love her story so much and that's all I can say. She is just one of those characters that I will love for the rest of my days. I want more people to read it so that I can like gush because this was, again, another favorite book of all time for me, where I would say, this is my favorite book of all time. I don't have a favorite book of all time anymore, but this is definitely a like, top three for me. This book is just haunting and beautiful and educational and just, like, devastating. Like, devastating. If you want to get into historical fiction, please read this book. Please, 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 please. Um, I feel like this is a great starter book into the genre. It's just... It's beautiful. These characters are all great and they're so different and you get to see how they end up coming together um, on this ship. So there you have it. Those are 10 of my favorite books of all time. I loved gushing about these books for <laughs> this long. If these are any of your favorites as well, please let me know. Or if you want to read one of these books, please let me know. If you end up reading one of these books, please 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 like dm me on instagram or something and i want to talk to you about them because i love gushing about my favorite books obviously thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all <laughs>